Here's the problem that we're trying to solve right now. And you might be thinking to yourself, what do you mean a problem that we're trying to solve? Don't you know how to build a quad? Well, when I really want to do a clean tutorial where everything goes right, I build it once off camera, I get all the problems sorted out, and then I build it again on camera and it all goes right. This is not one of those builds. The problem we're trying to solve is this. Here's the ESC, here's the flight controller, here is the cable that they gave me to connect the ESC with the flight controller. Here is the plug on the flight controller that goes to the ESC. You see the problem, this is not long enough. What kind of options do I have to solve? Because I actually think this is an opportunity, not a, we can learn something here. Well, one option would be to move the flight controller back on top of the ESC as iFlight intended. But the problem with that is that the flight controller connects to the VTX via some pins right here. The VTX must be mounted right on top of the flight controller. We don't have the option to easily disconnect it. Another thing we could do is, I guess we could rotate this 180 degrees. I don't love that because, let's see if we rotate it 180 degrees, then this plug here will go to this plug on the ESC and they'll be close enough together to work. That would work, but it would mean that the antenna connector on the VTX would be facing the front. I guess that's not the end of the world though. The other thing we could do is we could just build another freaking plug. These plugs are, there's it's a standard kind of plug and you can get these little kits. This one came from Race Day Quads and it's just a kit of a bunch of pre-terminated wires and uh, uh, plug headers in different sizes. And as tempted as I am to do that, I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna make this work with the stuff that came with it. So if you're following along at home, you don't suddenly have to go buy another kit just to make this work. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this around 180 degrees. Let's see if we then run into another problem with that one, because that would be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> I do, by the way, highly recommend having one or two of these kits around. It is great when you do end up in a situation like this where you've maybe you just broke your connector or you need to make a custom one. It's great to have the parts around there. If you wanna crimp those tiny connectors yourself, you can do it a lot cheaper, but it's a huge pain in the butt to crimp those tiny connectors and it's just not worth it to my mind. When you do install this, make sure you're not pinching any of the wires. It's a really easy mistake to make as you push this down to pinch some of the wires. And as you tighten it down, then you could damage them or get a short circuit to, to ground even, which would be... And I'm gonna add some fresh solder to the pigtail. Also gonna put a little flux on the wires. If you have flux paste, that's fine too. I prefer the liquid flux in the pen. Um, you can also get flux in a, like a syringe applicator. Any of it's fine. I'm gonna turn my iron up to 850 Fahrenheit. That's, some people say that's hotter than you need it, but for these um, 14 gauge wires, I think it's appropriate. And make sure you do black to minus and red to plus. Don't get that wrong, or there's a fly in here. You will regret if you get that wrong. Did I get it? Or did I just slap myself in the head for no reason? Now comes the time to install the receiver on the quad. And exactly what you do is gonna depend on what kind of receiver you're using. We're gonna be using a FreeSky receiver in this build. This is the FreeSky XM Plus. It's a basic receiver, but it totally gets the job done. And it's only like 15, 17 bucks, so it's not too expensive. If you are using a FreeSky receiver, your life is a little bit simpler because this flight controller comes with a plug, which is intended, and this is a pinout that I printed off the internet, a wiring diagram. It comes with a plug pre-wired for, you can see here it says S-Bus slash I-Bus. And in this case, the solder pads on these tiny little flight, con I normally prefer to direct solder. These solder pads are so tiny that I'm gonna use a plug because it's gonna make my life just that little bit easier. If you're using a spectrum receiver, you can see the wiring diagram here. They're suggesting 3.3 volts and the Suggesting you put the signal to this tiny little RX1 pad, although 
if this plug can be used for IBUS, then it ought to also be used for Spectrum, but that may be a topic for another day. If you're using Crossfire, you're probably also gonna to wanna to use TX1 and RX1 here. Um, boy, they sure are tiny, but that's probably where I would put them as well. And I'm looking at the different wire headers that came with this and trying to figure out which one they intend me to use. Oh, no, it's this one. This one comes with a servo plug. That's, that's what they intend to go with a receiver, yeah. Ground, five volts, yeah, that's it. So you can see we've got ground, five volts, and S bus. If you were using spectrum and needed 3.3 .3 volts, you'd need to pull out this red wire and move it to this fourth empty pin position. And you can do that by using a very, very small thin knife or, or something like that to lift this retaining tab and pull the wire out. You just slide it back in the other side. So this is what we're gonna use, but we're not gonna use this servo connector, we're just gonna direct solder it. I'm just stripping this with my fingernails, which is not the NASA approved technique, but it's um, it's silicon insulation, silicon, it's not plastic insulation, so it's pretty easy to strip with your fingernails. That's just the easiest way to do it. I've got the soldering iron turned back down. I'm no longer at uh, 850 Fahrenheit. We don't need that all that heat for these little tiny pet wires. This uh, gray piece here that I'm using is just a, sh a piece of, you can get silicon baking sheets for use for like rolling out pies and pastries. And I just cut a segment of it out and I use it to protect my work surface from uh, solder blobs. The way I like to solder, I, I, I don't like to solder through holes as through holes. I just like to get some solder on there and then just solder to the top of them as if they were surface mount pads. I just find that to be a little easier. I don't think it really matters. Yes, it, maybe it's technically not quite as strong. You may also notice that I am not using um, flux here. This is a small enough joint that the flux in the solder is more than sufficient. You don't want excess wire hanging out over the pad. So I'll just snip that one a little bit. And that's how we're gonna solder that one up. On the XM Plus, it's signal five volts ground. I'll give it some twists just to keep it neat. There we go. If I were more uh, careful, I would double check the five volts and ground. Let me get my multimeter out. I'm gonna put my multimeter into continuity mode, that's this mode, this little symbol here. When you're in that mode, when the two probes have electrical conductivity to each other, you'll hear a beep. So here's a trick we can use. Looking at the sides here, I can see that there is a five volt and ground pad. The five volt is labeled plus five. I'm gonna touch the plus five here and I'm gonna touch the center pin here. And that's supposed to be five volts. So all the five volt pins on a flight controller have continuity of each other. So we've confirmed that this wire is in fact going to five volts. And for ground, it's even easier because like the outside of the USB plug is always ground. So we can just double check ground here. Sure enough. So that confirms that our wiring is correct. I was pretty sure it was correct, but before you fry something by feeding it five volts where it doesn't want it, it's a good thing to do. We'll get back, we'll clean this up and mount this later, but that's gonna do it. We've installed our receiver. Now we come to the camera. We're gonna mount up this Runcam hybrid. And this is gonna go in the front position. Hey, it comes with some mounting hardware and some wires. Fantastic. So we got these little screws that are gonna go up through the bottom plate. Yeah, and then we've got these plastic standoffs. That's not enough thread sticking through there. That's a real shame. So this is obviously designed for a shorter, a thinner bottom plate than we're using. That's really unfortunate. Fingers crossed here. We must turn to our assortment of M2 screws. This is why you always need one. You can't ever count on getting the hardware that you're gonna need because the manufacturer just doesn't know that you're using a thicker bottom plate. This looks like this screw is gonna work. It's not too long anyway. Fingers crossed. Perfect, yeah, it's gonna be fine. 
I would eyeball that at six millimeter, an M2 by six millimeter. So then the run cam split is gonna go on and I honestly don't know whether the SD, I think the SD card should go facing down. My gut feeling is the SD card goes facing down. And I'm gonna install this, which is a little SD card retention cover as well. So that's gonna go. Yeah, looks good to me. And we'll go ahead and put these nuts on top. If I were to do this again, I would install the standoffs by screwing them into the nuts. Screwing the nuts down is pretty freaking tricky. And it's also pretty easy to accidentally damage the board as you, with your tool, as you tighten the nuts down. There's lots of little resistors and stuff that are super easy to just knock off. All right, now this uh, comes with this wire, which is for cameras. And I could direct solder that, but I'm gonna just take the easy way out. And I'm just gonna plug it in to the plug that comes with the run cam. That's why they included it. And the camera goes on the back side of the USB. For now, I'm just gonna leave this loose until we, you know, function check everything. I'm gonna make this neater later. For now, I just like to know that everything works. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's this one. Yeah, it's this one. This one has the camera style plug on one side and the flight controller style plug on the other. One thing it just occurred to me to worry about is how much the five volt regulator on this flight controller is rated for. The split style cameras pull a lot of current and some five volt regulators wouldn't be up for it. But this one is supposed to be rated for two and a half amps. So that should be enough and we should be all right. I'm be real careful not to break this plug as I plug this in. There we go. So that's plugged into the back. And then this connector here is made to go in a camera. I'm just gonna give that some twists. Camera, receiver. Holy crap. I think we have a quad. <laughs> Let's get an antenna here. If we wanna power a video transmitter on without an antenna, I will probably put a better antenna on than this for flight, but for testing purposes, this is more than sufficient. It just snaps in there. That connector is called an MMCX. Just snaps right in, and it's time for the, the smoke check. There are two checks I always do before I power on a quad for the very first time. First of all, maybe three checks. There's a visual inspection to be sure that you haven't accidentally like put the positive on the negative or the negative on the positive. Now in our case, we basically just got the, uh, the battery lead to check. We haven't had to solder up any ESCs. That's all automatic because that we bought an integrated stack, but We'll do it, just a little visual check. Everything's everything's plugged in though. There's not that much to check. It's not like we accidentally soldered five volts to VBAT and are gonna fry something. The other check we're gonna do is we're gonna do a test with our multimeter using continuity mode, as I showed you before. And we're gonna test for continuity between the battery leads and we don't want any. Yay. And you can do another check just to make sure you haven't screwed it up. Take the black wire, take the black wire, see the prong there, and test for continuity to the outside of the USB. And it should be there. That means you got your negative pin wired up correctly. So we've done that basic check. Everything has checked out. And then, this is called a smoke stopper. You need one of these. Now, if you don't have one of these right now, you're probably not gonna wait to get one or make one. You're probably just gonna forge ahead. No problem. But this will protect your quad from smoking itself. Not in every case, but some mistakes you can make, it will protect from. And the very first time I plug in, I always use it. So here we go. If I smoke it, I'm gonna get it on camera. One, two, three. Yes. OK. 
Okay, let's see what we got. Receiver's powered up. That's blinking. Flight controller is blinking. Video transmitter is blinking. Everything's looking good. Everything is looking good. Very encouraging. Now I'm going to pull out this little guy. This is my FPV wristwatch. <laughs> it's not, I don't actually wear it on my wrist, but it is a little receiver. And let's see if we can find this guy transmitting. Oh, there we go. Well, the we've got a screen full of Vs. That means the OSD is messed up, but we also don't have a camera. So the camera's not working, and the reason why is because when I was tightening down this, let me unplug the battery before I start poking around. But when I was tightening down this nut, the tip of my tool knocked two resistors off of here and it is ruined. So it looks like my Runcam hybrid is broken. Uh, I'm gonna get a replacement and by the time I finish the video, I'll have the replacement and you'll get to see the quadcopter fly and everything. But let's look on the bright side. The motors work. We hear the do do doot, do doot. Do. That tells us that the ESC is working and the ESC is seeing signal from the flight controller. That's a big green check mark. The receiver powers up. It's okay, seems good. The video transmitter, we see signal from the video transmitter. It's just a black screen with the on, with the OSD on top of it, but we do see it. That's all good. And we could even real quick test with a camera just by plugging a different camera in here. Oh, we could do that. And just check that the camera is working, you know. But um, this quadcopter is ready to take over to the computer and configure. And that's what we're gonna do in the next video. I'm not actually, you're saying, well, why don't you put the sides on and button it up and make it all pretty? I like to do the configuration on the computer with it kind of in its open state. Cause like now when I go to bind, I can easily get at the bind button. And if I've made any mistakes, I can, I don't have to take it all apart again to fix it. So that's what we're gonna do in the next video. I'm gonna go cry over the fact that I broke a freaking $70 board, but the freaking, I'll see you next time. Happy flying. Yep. I think camera's working. Oh, where'd the V's go? Oh, there they are. <laughs> oh, don't worry. That's easy to fix. Yeah, camera's working. It's the flippin' hybrid.